What's up, guys? Welcome to uh, Why Are You Laughing? I just figured we should do a uh, little uh, uh, <laughs> warning here that this is not a typical episode of Why Are You Laughing. We had Danny Polish Chuck on, who was a very funny comedian, and he took the reins. He brought us down a rabbit hole we did not expect to go down. Uh, also seemed like he didn't really want to be here. I couldn't quite tell, but you you decide. I like Danny. I think he's very funny. Um, and... The, I introduce Adam Sandler, but that is not the topic that we talk about, as I'm sure you can tell by the title of this episode. So uh, be prepared. It's very weird and very different. So uh, I don't know. I hope you guys like it. Um, it's just not the typical episode of Why Are You Laughing? We'll be back on schedule next week. And make sure you check out blindmike.net if you want to support the show. Um, all, our, uh, all our links are there. The, uh, the Apple, Spotify, YouTube, support the show for free, or you can support the show a little extra by going to the Patreon, uh, buying some merch. All those links are at blindmike.net, and uh, you can do the same for Craig at verygoodshow.org. And uh, curious to hear you guys' feedback on this, but just let me know, whether it's on the Patreon or on Twitter, uh, let me know. And here it is. Uh, why are you laughing? I don't really know how to start shows. Come on now, don't start, don't start liking me now. So yeah, I'm funny compared to you know. Well, you'll see later. I stand for my own. I know a lot of fucking idiots. I think a lot of shit is mean spirited just because it goes against what they believe. But the relief of comedy is it takes things that aren't funny and it allows us to laugh about them for an hour. You got a purple suit to buy and a gigantic <laughs> coffin. Why are you laughing? Evening, everybody. Welcome to Why Are You Laughing, a history of comedy podcast. And today I'm pleased to introduce to you Adam Sandler's first album, They're All Gonna Laugh at You, as well as our guest this week. Uh, you may know him from his YouTube special, The International Jew, or the podcast that he does with Ryan Long, The Boys Cast. It's Danny Polish, Chuck. What's going on, man? So, how's it going? Um... I, 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 you're not, you're not, uh, you're not feeling well. Is that right? Uh, I am not feeling the greatest. <laughs> no, the, uh, so where, where do you guys live? Where are you guys based out of? Uh, Boston New York? area. Boston area. You just, you just wear what a Yankees hat just to piss people off. I, I used to be, it's a whole thing. I used to be a Red Sox fan. I was, I'm not that big a baseball fan anymore, but oh, I, okay. I root for the Yankees, I guess. <laughs> that must be nice. Um, yeah, I uh, I was at the the comedy club. I don't know if you know the the stand in New York. Yes, it's, uh, they had their ten year anniversary party last night. So that's why I am the way I am right now. <laughs> All right. Well, Danny, very funny guy. Big fan of his uh, YouTube special, The International Jew. Appreciate um, it. I also like the Boys Cast, and I have referenced uh, you guys, you and Ryan, for um, the sketches that you guys do online. I've often said. Uh, Gillian Keeves, uh, the stuff that Kyle Dunning does on Instagram, and the stuff that you guys put out there are pretty much the best sketches on the internet. So thanks. I, how good. integral are you in the, do you write with Ryan or, um, I kind of like, uh, like he basically for most of the stuff will like, he'll come up with, uh, the general idea and then we'll like punch it up and stuff like that. Right. And like we imp like Im improvise quite a lot and stuff like that. But yeah. Um, and so the, I, I uh, reached out to Danny because I was a fan, thought he'd be good on the show. And uh, he threw out the idea of doing uh, Adam Sandler's first album because generally I like to do something if we have a guest. I like to do something that uh, interested them when they were young or influenced them, whatever. Um, and obviously you do sketches now, too. Were you more into stand up as a kid or sketch comedy or did uh, I was into both, to be honest. I was in all of it. I was, I was, I was like really into comedy when I was young. Like right. really like it was like when I was seven years old, I was like watching Saturday night live and stuff. Right. How old, so how old are you when, uh, uh, they're all going to laugh at you came out? It, what year did it come out? Like 95, 93. 93 so I would have yeah. been 10. I was 10 when okay. I came out. Yeah, and so it's honestly like for a 10 year old to be listening to this <laughs> shit. I remember it was like one of the first albums I bought and I would like just listen to it. it. I had like a discman that I got for my you know birthday and I would just like listen to it in my room. And I remember my mom being like, what are you listening to? Cause I'd be like laughing and she's like, she knew it was some crazy shit, but she still yeah. let me listen to it. It's the perfect. So I, when I was a kid, same thing, but I had, uh, I think his second album that came out in 96, uh, yeah. what the hell happened to me? I think it was called. Yeah. Um, and so that, that was the first Sandler album I had. And it was the same thing where like for a 10 year old, like we'll go back and listen to some of it. And it doesn't, uh, when I say it doesn't age well, I don't mean it's like going to get him canceled or anything. It just doesn't necessarily hold up, you know, 30 years later, whatever. Well, it's just like nobody even does audio sketches. Right. Like, it's just like, that's just not even a thing people do anymore. 
No, which was very like of the time. A lot of people did it. I mean, more so. I think by the time like Sandler's albums got very popular, it was phasing out a little bit. But if you look at like, I mean, back in the days of like Na- National Lampoon being on radio and shit, that's what they had to do pretty much. Well, they had to do. It's like, yeah, I mean, how are you? You have either that or you, you know, have a TV show. But right. there's no there's no distribution otherwise. And even if you were like, we're gonna put this out on VHS or something, you're like, it's expensive. Like back then, it was like to shoot all these sketches as like actual video sketch, like you know, would cost yeah. millions of dollars. Yeah, but for, so for a kid that's like 10 or 12, as we'll listen, that's pretty much the perfect age to get into this album because it's kind of the age where like, okay, maybe a 10-year-old, 12-year-old, your parents wouldn't let you listen to it, but it's not insanely like, I think the comedy holds up in the sense that it's just silly. And yeah, it's just what, silly. Yeah, sure. and that's what Sandler took a lot of shit for over the years, but like, I almost give him credit when you look at like Jack and Jill or something, not that I'm necessarily a fan, but you look at that and say like, the guy never fucking changed. He just does what he thinks is funny, you know? A hundred percent. Just hangs out with his friends. Yeah. It's basically like every one of his projects is just like, he gets to hang out with all his friends Yeah, and just like do something stupid. Um, I mean, so uh, 1993 Sandler was on SNL, obviously, and this album did uh, extremely well. So oh, this must have, yeah, it must have been millions, right? Millions um, actually, not uh, less than two million. Not much okay. less, but less than two. Which is, I think, okay. for a comedy album, still very good. Yeah, I mean, at the time, like in my life at the time, it was like one of the biggest things that existed. Right. Yeah, I don't know like, if it's comparable, but it's like like a YouTube special getting that many views would be very successful. You yeah, know what I mean, for sure. like oh, at, at that point sure. in Sandler's career, I don't know if that's comparable, really. Cause no, because there wasn't that studio, much other. There weren't uh, like that many other things to compete with it. You know, right? Like it's not like uh, yeah, they're, like I don't even know of any other. I'm sure there were other like sketch albums, but I don't. I don't really know them. I I know Norm came out with one like in probably 2000, early 2000s. Yeah, I remember hearing that on Pandora. I remember this. Um, uh, Fantastic Four. Yeah, the fantastic, exactly. Did, yeah, would come up on Pandora, and that was the first time I was like, "Holy shit!" Did Norm do one of those albums? Also, I never knew that until stumbling upon that. Yeah, it sold um, um, more than two uh, two million albums. It sold. Oh, it did sell more than two. Yep. Yeah. So, and it was uh, also nominated for a Grammy, which yeah, and like that was back when that was, was two million albums was like a major deal back then. Like. Like it's not the same as two million views, like in that sense, because you're like, yeah, people drop twenty five bucks. Yeah, I was also interested times. to see. I was interested to see that it was also nominated for a Grammy, just because now it feels like, uh, yeah, I don't know how. I don't think comics are particularly focused on Grammy awards, anyways. No, but it does feel like it's kind of like the most artsy uh, special or album gets nominated in some weird way, and this is the complete antithesis of that like they by nominating this they didn't give a fuck <laughs> yeah yeah, it's, um, yeah it says it was nominated for best comedy album i wonder what won oh yeah check that out craig wouldn't one in 1993 that's a good question um but anyways uh the other thing i found interesting is like uh sandler being on snl at the time i obviously as most people did would have known him as a sketch guy i knew he did stand up and i assumed it wasn't anything special, but I went back and watched a little bit of his very early stuff. And he was a funny, like traditional standup as well. Like, I don't know that we would know the name Adam Sandler if he strictly stuck to stand up, but there were some jokes where I was like, okay, like he had chops too, which I didn't really realize about him. Oh yeah. He's just a hilarious all around uh, hilarious guy. 1993 um, Peter Shekili. I don't even know how to pronounce that. But no the, idea. the album was PDQ Bach, Music for an Awful Lot of Wind and Percussion. Uh, well, what? we all remember that classic. <laughs> George Carlin won the following year. <laughs> well, I'm pro. This is bullshit. Oh, yeah, uh, 37th. That was at the 37th annual Grammy Awards? Yeah. Which seems very, it, d- it doesn't feel like that many for 1993. I would have thought it would have been around longer. Mm-hmm. Anyways. Yeah. We're yeah. off track here. Um, the uh, so the first clip we have, um, and Danny, I'm curious if you how you feel about this because we've gotten into like uh, joke stealing and thing, and I think a lot of that stuff can be overblown at times. But this did stand out to me particularly because of the SNL connection. Um, this is a track from uh, "They're All Gonna Laugh at You," where Adam Sandler is essentially playing a cheerleader, and then I'll get to the, my thoughts on it after. 
Okay, cool. Okay, you guys, let's hear some spirit. United, we are united. We'll be cuts where the tigers. We're out for victory. Yeah! Come on, you guys! I want to hear you! Come on! The girls' volleyball team's got a big game tonight, and we're gonna win, cause we're the- Sit down! You guys are assholes! You think this is easy being a cheerleader? Let's see you come down here and try it! Shut up! You're the one who should be shutting up! This is my senior year of cheerleading and you're ruining it! I paid for my pom-poms with my own money! You suck! I, I was gonna do a split for you guys, but now I'm not gonna. Cause you guys don't appreciate anything! Ow! Who threw that? I'm gonna get a bruise now! I hate my school! <laughs> We're sorry. Just kidding. <laughs> you suck. Oh, no. <laughs> so tell me if you think this is a reach at all, but like, is the Will Ferrell, uh, Sherry Terry sketch just like a complete ripoff of that? Of that? Um, I don't think so. Okay. I don't think, well, I don't remember the, like, I remember the sketch, but I don't think it was like that. I thought exactly. it pretty much was that more or less. Just with two uh, well, they, well, that theirs was like a recurring, uh, thing, right? Right. Like they were there. They, I, I don't know. Maybe one of them could have been similar, but I don't. I definitely don't think as like SNL. If they're one thing that they're conscious of stealing from, <laughs> yeah, it would be yeah. from themselves. Although that's why it stood they, out to me. They'll from lot. everybody else, but I don't think they're going to steal from themselves because someone will be like, yeah. I mean, again, like the their head writer dudes, like you know Tim Hurley here, whatever. Like yeah. they're they're like been on for. 30 years like they, they're not going to rewrite your, like well and Hur- Hurley he was a writer on this very prevalent and him and Sandler were close friends so yeah exactly that's what I'm saying so I, I don't think so because I think he's still on SNL I could be right. wrong but well so um, we did you know, this Peter Shickley guy yeah who I had never heard of in my oh. life and I, I consider myself have you guys ever heard of this guy no I have not okay because he won Best comedy album in 1990, 1991, 1992, and 1993. Okay. This guy's prolific. So won, <laughs> this guy won four fucking years in a row. Okay. The first year he won, sorry to go off track here, but <laughs> no, I just please. like, I'm like, this, find this wild. Okay. First year, he's, he's like a musical uh, comedy guy. He beat year one, he beat Dice, <laughs> Sam Kinison, Irma Bombeck, never heard Sandra Bernhardt. Okay. Then he beat the next year, he beats, um, like Jonathan Winters, the best of comic relief, Garrison Keeler. Then he beats George Carlin, Jackie Mason the following year. And then the, his for fourth year in a row, he beats George Burns, Rita Rudner, Jonathan Winters, and Weird Al. Good God. This man. <laughs> Who the fuck is this guy? Craig, <laughs> Craig, can we pull up a clip of this guy? We might have to I can't it. even believe I've never, like, I, I, it's unbelievable to me. And like, so the two years before him was Robin Williams won the two years before him, before yeah. that, like, Bill Cosby, Whoopi Goldberg. Like, these are like all heavy hitters. And then four years of this guy I have never heard of. We got to find a clip of this. This might just be the Peter Shulnick podcast. Whatever the fuck is his name. Sh- Shickley. Shickley. His name is Professor Peter Shickley, and he's still alive, it looks like. We might have to do an um, episode on this guy. He's 87 years old. <laughs> he lives in Ames, Iowa. I think we're doing it, Craig. I think this is it. <laughs> yeah, this is... I mean, I just... Honestly, this is, like, unbelievable to me. <laughs> Peter Shickley. Um, um, while Craig while Craig looks that up... Uh, he's, like a mu- he's like a composer, I guess. Oh, so do you think it's something like, um, at like, uh, well, he's, gold, he, the, at the Golden Globes where like the Martian was nominated for best comedy or something like that? Where but he's like, he won specifically best. It says from 90, I'm looking at his, his Wikipedia from 1993, Shickley's PDQ Bach recordings earned him four consecutive wins for the Grammy award for best. So it's like the same album. Basically. He just kept coming out with a, like a follow up, and every year. Like, you know how hard it is to just come out with a new comedy album every single year? Right. Let alone just to go win four years in a row, best comedy mm-hmm. album? That's why I think the Grammys are maybe, like, bullshit, but then everybody else was, like, 
How have yeah, I, I mean, never if there's heard of George guy. Carlin and Sandler, like these are these are names at least. Yeah, I have a uh, un- unreal. Is beating up. Let me. I have the audio on my phone here. Let me just hook it up to the board because no, it's go it's well. him on uh, Carson. Okay, well we'll see if this works. I don't. I really just don't understand what's going on right now. <laughs> Four years in a row over like the biggest names to ever do it. All right, let's do it. Yeah, like, like, like it's not like there's just like a weak crop of people those years. Like he beat George Carlin and Dice in his prime. <laughs> and Dice, yeah, like Dice like, in his prime. Uh, the next work is by Johann Vest, Sebastian Bach's son, uh, PDQ Bach. This is an excerpt from a very large, not to say gross work, uh, for piano and orchestra called Variations on an Unusually Simple-Minded Theme. He's playing a grand piano in Johnny's studio. This is going to be like visual or something? I don't know. No, it's a comedy album. Yeah, it's an album. Oh, right. Good point. Good point. What? He is playing the piano like a loser. What the fuck is going on? This is just highbrow comedy that we don't get. It's going over our heads, man. He's he's playing the piano, uh, like with his shin. (laughs) All right, so I'm blind. I have the privilege of not being able to see this. Mm -hmm. I don't get the audio version. It doesn't make any sense as an album. I'm gonna. It's an album, exactly. It's like if the gag is of like a visual gag. He shouldn't be winning best comedy album. Yeah, this is outrageous. Okay, and he got called over to Johnny to to the couch for not even speaking. Boy, Johnny was like, "This is good stuff. You gotta let's interview you." Jesus, what what is going on? I oh. I'm honestly like speechless. I don't understand what's happening. Dead or alive, Peter Shickley. He's alive. Oh, He's 87 years old. He was in Iowa. I'm gonna try to get him. I on think we've got to protest these wins. Get Sandler's Grammy. <laughs> I mean, Sandler was, yeah, I guess Sandler was nominated that year. I don't even know if he was nominated for. Uh, wasn't on the list. Was in, yeah. You know, th- this might be something where you're looking up 93. So he was technically, Sandler was nominated in 94 or something maybe because the album came out. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, he was nominated in 95 gotcha. over right here. So he was nominated in 95 for They're All Gonna Laugh at You. And he lost to Sam Kinison uh, live from hell. Thank God. Because wow. if he lost to this guy, I was going to fucking lose it. <laughs> Shickley is just running rampant over the comedy scene in the nineties. Who the f- and yeah, but it's like crazy because it's he's sandwiched in between like Robin Williams and George Carlin wins. <laughs> like Robin Williams won the two before, and then Carlin Kinnison, Jonathan Winters, Al Franken, Chris Rock, like Mel Brooks, Chris Rock, George Carlin. It's like so, it's like just they like had this four years where this dude is just taking them down. Peter Shinkley. <laughs> <laughs> Danny, clear your schedule because we're gonna have you back for the Peter Shickley episode. <laughs> how, you, how, is it gonna be just one? <laughs> I don't know if we can fit it into just. I one. don't. I don't even understand what this is, though. <laughs> this will be my big investigative piece now. It'll this be is like honestly, piece. I'm seeing this. I'm like, I want to make like a documentary about this guy because what is going on? <laughs> Four <laughs> years in a row. We've got to interview Shickley fans now. See, I mean, <laughs> you probably could get a hold of him. That's what I'm this saying. Might be like one of the most famous comedians who nobody has ever well, heard of. If he's in Iowa, you'll go to his door and he's like, I haven't, he'll do the Obi Wan. He's like, I haven't gone by that name in years. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> that's, that's where I want to know like uh, the, the influences now. Where are we watching, uh, you know, fucking, it was Shane Gillis secretly influenced by Peter Shickley. We have no idea. I don't know. Who, who, are, his, who are his influences in comedy now? I don't know. I don't Wh- fucking whoever's know. currently I'm doing so on his films. website. So I guess it was a character he did called PDQ Bach. Okay. And he was like, this was a character he was doing. This is what he won for. And it says PDQ Bach is widely considered to be the most uh, 1807 to 1742. So I guess <laughs> before Christ. Boy, I, I is widely considered to be the most justifiably neglected composer in the history of music called a manic plagiarist of the highest order, the most dangerous musician since Nero, that no good lion cheating, wine swilling buffoon, and other things not quite so complimentary. 
I kind of respect him that he's like, I'm going to do a, a an attack on composers. And that's going to be I just, how did this win? Bit. How is this <laughs> four years in a row the best comedy album? That has to be, that must be a time where they wanted to be, they wanted to appear intellectual or something. Like they were, I, it was high more, Carla, Carlin wasn't cutting it for like intellectual comedy? I, get, I don't know. I guess not. Not as much as Shickley anyways. This is crazy. Yeah. Well, we will. Uh, I wish I, I wish I had only prepared notes on Peter Shickley, but we will. That's okay. That's okay. I you promise. Can, I, I mean, this is good, dive. good content for you guys to have another time. Do a deep dive. <laughs> Probably you could do all four of the albums. I think we will. I'll, we'll analyze them, break them down. I we'll, am. We'll compare them to the albums that he beat that year. Yeah. Yeah. What's funnier? Just play a piano or like dice telling someone to lick his nuts. It's, it's hard to say. It's hard I guess, to say. but it's like there weren't even the only options. Like, yeah, Dice, but then you have Kennison, you have Sandra Bernhard. Like, I don't know. It's very weird. Yeah. Um, Sorry oh, to go right. off, off the rails, but. No, please. Um, oh, what I did want to ask you, we were talking about uh, the joke stealing and that shit. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I do think it is overblown. We've had an episode about it. We've talked about it. Um, but one of the things we talked about was like, Amy Schumer. When Amy Schumer uh, gets criticized for a lot of that stuff, they bring up sketches from her show. And like Kurt Metzger pretty much defended her saying, like, we didn't know that mad TV sketch existed. We just never saw it. Yeah. And people kind of people kinda criticize that, saying, like, oh, you have to do background research. There's so no way. Guy, There's impossible. That's what I was gonna ask you. Is as a guy it's- that makes sketches, like, how would you go about even vetting that? I mean, it's impossible because there's no centralized database of every sketch ever. Right. Right. And like what, so what's the limit? Like if someone makes a sketch at home and then versus like, if it's a network TV show now, again, that's a huge writer's room. Is it possible that someone, when they were like a child at midnight was watching mad TV at midnight as they were like dozing off and they watched this sketch and maybe they did see it, but they don't remember it. And like, Certainly possible, but sure. I, th- I think intent is really w- what you're going after. Like, yeah. are you knowingly stealing? And then, uh, yeah, I don't know. The whole stealing thing is like, like it. It, it gets it, me a lot. Honestly, every, now that now every YouTube to have comment, them. like every YouTube special, is like, ah, this joke was done by, and it's like you know, kind of a stretch, but the person just wants to seem like they're catching you in something. I mean, I've had jokes where I did a joke, and then you know, because it's something that's like somewhat topical and then you, you know a month later you hear oh like uh, I've had jokes were literally uh, I mean here's a perfect example I had a joke that was based on an actual experience in my life of going to um, uh, where was it Laos in Southeast Asia and then uh, I, and I had been doing this joke on stage for like a few years and it was instead of just something happened like that I did in my life and then I saw a Nate Bargatze bit that was like very similar because he went right. to the same place. And then I was like, okay, I guess I'm not going to do this anymore, but I didn't steal it from him. No, we right. just, we just went and did the same thing. And so I had like a, you know, a similar joke. Uh, I will say when we see uh, Ryan Long dressed up as a composer, I'm going to have a <laughs> Peter Shickley. I'm going to have an idea yeah. that you were. I mean, Ryan actually gets stolen from a lot, like oh, really? pretty, pretty blatant. Yeah. Uh, like, you know, the, like people who kind of just like, copy a lot of his things but it'll be like you know sketches uh just like someone's youtube sketch where they'll just kind of blatantly like steal the right. format i mean babylon b is pretty notorious for lifting uh, they've lifted a few things from ryan that are like oh, really? pretty pretty blatant yeah well you guys do topical stuff like i think I, the first time i heard of ryan was the sketch I forget the, I don't remember like the title, but the, it was essentially like Republicans and Democrats are the same the, person. The, the woke racist one? Yes. yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, my the, favorite. Yeah. And that, so that's the one that like, kind of everybody. You guys, you guys basically, what I'm saying is basically you guys get into topics that a lot of people would want to say like, ah, fuck, that's a great idea. I should have thought of that, mm-hmm. which I'm sure leads to people just completely ripping it off yeah but some people will like do a similar topic and go whatever that's similar but like babylon b has had they've had a couple where ryan just like showed them to me and i'm like oh yeah that's like they just watched your thing and then did a version of it right right pretty pretty blatantly oh by the way speaking of uh promoting uh danny polish chuck what's the show i heard you on uh 
WATP a couple weeks ago. What is yeah. the show that you're now watching? Oh God! And reviewing on YouTube. What it's called this? the. Fe- it's not a comedy podcast. It's called okay. the Female Dating Strategy Podcast. Okay. Uh, if anybody, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, I don't, so. Ba- I mean, in. like the sh- the short story here is I um I tweeted this tr- this joke about Gabby Petito like when last last year uh, or whatever when that whole thing was going on and then. The, the joke was essentially like, cause she got like 6 million Instagram followers after she was dead. Okay. Like she had an Instagram account and then everybody just started following her. And so she got 6 million. And the, and the joke was basically like, this is just like a good, uh, um, like little thing for aspiring influencers to take away. If they ever want to get famous, it's just like, essentially that was a joke. It's like, you know, get murdered. Right. right. It's like, right. that's a good way to become famous. And then, uh, I, it was worded better than that. I don't remember the exact wording, but anyways, yeah, yeah. someone like, someone who listens to the boys cast is like, Hey, you're in this subreddit They're They're like flaming you for your tweet. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I go to the subreddit and the subreddit is called female dating strategy. I'd never heard of it. And then we, uh, we covered it on boys cast or whatever, but like, so their whole thing is they're kind of like, I can't even describe, like, they're like not in cells. They, they call themselves fem cells. I guess they're like, okay. Jesus. And they say a lot of crazy, like they'll say. It's, amazing. it's great to see a group that inspires to be in cells. Or is like kind of. <laughs> and basically their whole deal is like, they're just trying to help women not get like fucked around by men. And, you know, they're trying to be like, yo, you should, you, should, you deserve everything. And like, you know, and they're all like men should always, like if a man ever even like, uh, um, and to like, you know, says like you know maybe we should like split the bill on a first day you're like never see that guy ever again you like you don't pay for meals like they're all into like all this stuff they're just like we want what we want and we deserve it blah 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 but anyways they have these they have these terminologies for guys they call them uh the one was the funniest is low value male is they use that term a lot is like as one of their categories for men is there's high value men low value men negative value men and then scrotes that's like their how they classify because guys we just go like one to ten and they go so they have like these things anyway so low, we just thought low value mail was so funny and then i have a, i have a call-in show that i do on tuesday nights that's called low value mail but like m-a-i-l and then i started i'm just trying to get into like streaming and so then i was like you know what i'm gonna watch the female dating strategy podcast essentially stream it and just like react to it and it's there these chicks are fucking crazy but sometimes they're not sometimes like I find myself honestly agreeing with them on half of the things they say. What's, what's their biggest issue? Their biggest issue is they're just like straight up. They're like, you know, like men are shit and trash and women deserve more. And women, they're really against all like the liberal feminism stuff of like women and men are equal. They're like, women and men are not equal. Like they don't think that they're like, we don't want to. And you know, it, like they just say a lot of stuff that like pretty conservative uh, people say and that liberal women like hate, they just kind of take a bit of all these different things, I guess. And they're just like, yeah, you know, we, you know, we, we, we don't have to tolerate like anything we don't want to, but like all the problem is you're like, this is fine advice. If you are like a super high status, hot woman, but like if you're, you know, some like, you know, overweight woman who's like in her late thirties, who's being told like, yeah, just like be super discerning about who you're going to date. You're just going to like die alone. Yeah. Which is always the, the fun thing in life. <laughs> you know, you know yeah. like the supermodel is like, yeah, I don't get why these people are bitching. Everything's easy. <laughs> yeah. But also like those women don't even listen to this podcast. It's all like women who are having trouble in relationships and can like never get a good guy. And then, the, and their advice is like raise your standards. And you're like, no, probably the advice should be lower your standards, but or you know, people- Anyways, it's, fun, it's funny to listen to. They're 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 really all over the place. And then my ultimate goal is to eventually. So I'm trying to catch up because they've been doing. I'm on like the eight. I've done 18 episodes, and like we listen to them sometimes on like 1.5 speed, and we'll do like two or three in one stream. Yeah, because I've only been doing it for like a, maybe a month or two, and uh, but they're on like 50 something episodes. So I'm trying to catch up. <laughs> That's funny. where the fuck is so Mike? It's, it's, it's hell. Mike left us. It seems. Oh. Hello. Yeah. It's. We lost him right, completely. You'll be two seconds. 
All right. Yeah, no problem. His, his internet dropped out. It'll be two seconds. <laughs> oh, it's all good, dude. I've dealt with that. I have in New York here. I don't know what it's like there, but in New York, like there's only spectrum basically so many places and it's like the shittiest. I got to say too, it, it took me way too long to realize you're in front of a green screen. <laughs> yeah, I'm in front of a green. This is the green. So I was just before I came on here. That's why I was a few minutes late. So I do a, for my Tuesday night show, I do a Patreon episode after that's the background mm -hmm. is, which is like the, you know, it's like the low value, uh, kind of apartment. Like if you search whatever it's like, yeah. but anyways, um, yeah. So anyways, I had a Patreon episode that I do after, but I couldn't do it last night because of this party. So then I just did it right before this It was like afternoon. So it was like, I was doing it literally like minutes before. That's, that's a single guy's here. apartment. If I ever saw one. That's, yeah. That's the whole, that's the whole joke kind of thing. Yeah. I got it's some, it's all you need to That's why guys are happy. Women need all this yeah. stupid <laughs> shit. <laughs> I'm looking at this Peter, Peter Shickley. Dude, he's blowing yeah. my mind right now. I completely forgot what even the topic of this episode was. <laughs> I, 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 dude, I honestly, it's crazy. It's four, honestly, four years in the, like the first comedy boom. <laughs> yeah. I mean, not, yeah. It's, it's like him with all, and like, I guess he is like a classically trained but how is this comedy? I don't know. I need to find. I can't find his albums though. I just find like little shorts. That's why I've been. I'm like, we might. Just I think turn it's called this. PDQ Bach. I think that's just a song. That's what it seemed like. That's what he was playing. No, on. I think that's the. That's like the character. Oh, is like so he's doing a character of this composer, who's like the. P. I want to see if. Yeah, it's it's here. It's on uh, Spotify. Oh, okay. An evening with PDQ Bach, <laughs> 1993. I see where we are in the conversation now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I always just can't get over this. It's insane. Uh, no, I'm glad. It's, I literally cannot get over this. Um, I apologize, boys. My internet went out. Uh, it's all good. I, I, I feel your pain. <laughs> yeah, so here we go. Here's, here's the album. The music for the... This is the last Grammy he won. Music for an awful lot of wins and percussions. Mm -hmm. Grammy winning comedy album. <laughs> is there, is what have we discovered since I've been gone? Uh, we were basically just talking about the, um, that podcast and women and how they're. You know, and also the, I have a green screen. <laughs> it's, I said, took, he has a green screen of, apartment. An, of an empty apartment behind him. And it took me too long to realize <laughs> it was a green screen. Dude, I have people <laughs> even watch the show who like watch it every week. And sometimes people are like, after like, you know, 10 episodes are like, wait, you don't actually live there? I'm like, no, it's not my place. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> it's just a green screen. Um, all right. I don't know what to do now. I've wasted enough of uh, Danny's time. It almost feels like getting to Adam Sandler. We can get it. I mean, we can get into I mean, if you want to get into this fucking PDQ box shit, I... Uh, I kind yeah. of do. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Honestly, whatever. I... I feel like this is honestly more... This is more interesting to me because I've listened to that Adam Sandler album 5,000 times. times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just used to listen to it on a loop when I was a kid. So I, uh, but this PDQ Bach dude. Can we, can we find any more click? Can we find more audio? So you, you, can, you, you, you can share your, can you like share your screen or whatever? And, uh, just pull up YouTube. Can you guys do that yeah. right here? Yep. Just do that. And just like, let's just like watch some PDQ Bach. <laughs> I don't you, you won't get a copyright on it. I don't think cause it's definitely fair use. You'd be surprised. We get, we, on so, sometimes you do, I, I get them too, but then you just yeah. dispute them and, Yep. And well, the re the reason I asked you about uh, the podcast, the fem, uh, what the fuck's it called? Female I'm dating sorry. strategy. Female de female dating strategy. The reason I asked you about that is because basically you've gone into a deep dive where you're obsessing over them, and that's what yeah. we've done with the 1978 program Quincy on our oh, Patreon. Well, well. So we're m more bizarre and uh, uh, <laughs> obscure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The Qu I've never even heard of Quincy. What yeah. is that? It's amazing. It is a so, so it's a show about a medical examiner, a coroner. Yeah, Quincy M. E. Yes, played by Jack Klugman. And we can't understand why they didn't just make it a detective show, because the show is about a coroner who solves murders. And so he doesn't just diagnose the cause of death. He goes and like investigates. He uh, interrogates witnesses. He comes up with theories. He tampers with crime scenes constantly. 
it is a real bizarre concept where I've said, why didn't they just make it a show about a detective with a medical background? Yeah. Yeah. And it's got seven seasons, eight seasons. It lasted a long time. Maybe. Jesus. And, and made it to syndication. Career. <laughs> it's crazy too. I always find it like so fascinating how like there's all these people who are like hugely famous and I'm just like, yeah, never heard of this person. Oh, you never heard of Jack Klugman? Never heard of Jack Klugman. I'm surprised. That's what I'm saying. But like, I'm sure Jack Klugman was like, you know, he was. He was also in the Odd Couple. Yeah, he's. Pre- I mean, yeah, he's, he's like fucking well huge. He's probably like massively famous. And he's like, yeah, I, hey. I don't think anyone our age should necessarily know Jack Klugman though. No, definitely no, not. But in our lifetime, he was doing uh, very sad anti-smoking PSAs. He had one of the voice boxes, and he was all kinds of fucked up. So we don't. Oh, know he ended. Oh, he ended up having. Uh, he was the voice box guy. He was, he was one of them for sure. I don't know if he was the voice box guy, but he did those commercials and he had that kind of uh raspy. But, like, did, but did he have like the, like he was a smoker who like got sick? Oh yeah. Yeah. He oh, had, that was his deal. Um, some get, kind of cancer. Forget. I got to quit. Throat cancer maybe. What's that Craig? I said, I got to quit. I can't be like Klugman. No. So, well, I hope you are in some ways, but yeah. Yeah. Um, did we find PDQ Buck? Yeah. I don't have to share my screen because. It is just an album, so I can just I have I found it in clips actually. So okay, that works. So I guess so. This first one's called "Grand Serenade for an Awful Lot of Wind and Percussion." The grand entrance it sounds funny. I don't know about you, Danny, but this sounds like we're gonna laugh. If he doesn't, it sounds better. I mean, it must be better than George Carlin in his like <laughs> prime. This guy what? named what Andrew I Clay. Mean, that was long after the 730 words. What did Carlin really do after that? You know, like, yeah, so, uh, yeah, it was just a fucking hack. <laughs> All right, let's see. Well, I'm in stitches. <laughs> it's literally just comedy music. It can't be. Oh my god, really? What's going on? I don't understand. What's the... Go, this, play another track. <laughs> this, this is the beginning of the album. Or maybe fast forward? Like jump ahead a little bit? Like, should this pre... Like, the fact that we don't even understand what's going on, like, it's just... I, I don't, you know, at least maybe like... something. Maybe with, that's the brilliance of it, Danny. See, to a dumb guy yeah, like me, it just sounds that. like well-done <laughs> music. Yeah, it just seems like a regular composer. Uh, <laughs> I, I'll play it seems it. like this guy wanted to steal Grammy Awards by moving himself into the comedy category. What kind of fucking dirt did this guy have on the Grammy committee? <laughs> you know, like... But not even that. I wanted, Why wasn't he nominated in the... I'm sure there's a classical section or something. There has to be something for composers at the Grammys. Well, but I guess there's like... In, I, mean, I mean, I imagine he gets dusted in that category. Oh, okay. So right? He's, like, he's probably just like... World, but. Probably. So he but plays... How, is he, a, how is he the most genius in the comedy <laughs> world? So he plays in his underwear and gets awards. There's no, there's no speaking on this. This is a different track, by the way. I wonder if, like, if you talk to musical comics, like, does Stephen Lynch say, like, dude, I'm gonna, like, I hang out with a lot of comics. I'm gonna start asking every single fucking one of them (laughs) about this. Like, this is now my new obsession. No, no, you know, you gotta do is say you're a huge fan of them. And make that so they'll go look into no, a bus. No, I'm just trying to ask people, like, do you even know who this guy is? <laughs> it is it is funny to attack it with arrogance. What's his name again, Craig? Peter what? Shickley. Shickley. Yeah, just Shickley. go, oh, you, oh, you don't know Shickley? You don't know Shickley's work? <laughs> yeah, beat, how do you not know that, dude? He beat out dice. Like, I'm going to start asking absolutely. Fuck, I wish I knew about this last night because there were so many comedians at the stand. The, the, <laughs> dice man, the dice man cometh came out in, in 89, the first year he won. And that's like my favorite. Dude, if I dice ever see album. dice, dice is sometimes at the stand. If I ever see dice, <laughs> uh, for dude, I'm gonna be like, yo, what is going on with this? What's the deal with Shickley? <laughs> what is the deal with Shickley? You lost to him. I'm like, How what did you? What be? were you thinking at the time? He's a How fucking homo. Be? <laughs> if you asked Andrew Dice Clay that and he had a real vendetta, he's like that motherfucker. Like he just gets serious. <laughs> he or it. he's like, yeah, yeah. He's like, man, he's like, that guy is just the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why that's why he cried on TV was actually because of Shickley. 
<laughs> I think the day the laughter died came out one of the during one of those shickly years, didn't it? Wasn't that ninety one or something? No, uh, shickly years as historians call them. Yeah, uh, I don't know what which one. Lo- Di- well, just Andrew Dice Clay Dice was what he lost in, in nineteen ninety. But this is like when was Dice playing Madison Square Garden? On the late eighties, yeah, early nineties. Well, I know, I know that Dice Man Cometh, but I'm pretty sure it was 89. Right. Yeah. Okay. So Dice, yeah. What years? Yeah. Released 91. So Is that was like, one? he lost to this guy the year he sold out Madison Square Garden. 1990 was How the day the after died. How about this? Can you go back to him on Carson? Can we hear him talking to Johnny? Uh, Just yes. explain what's going on. Because I feel like maybe that'll give us some insight. Dude, I'm maybe fucking about to questions. buy a flight to Iowa. Like, I gotta know what's going on here. This is ruining my brain. <laughs> that would, I mean, everyone needs uh, social media content now, Danny. That could be a good, like, TikTok series or something. You investigating. I might not even film it. I just need to know for just closure. For I just need closure on this. <laughs> right, I'm just, what is happening? On everybody. Uh, let me get through this ad here because I'm a poor. Ah. Um, this is a video, so I'll be able to pull this up. Um, yeah, I don't. <laughs> I'm sorry, Adam, but this is more important. <laughs> it, it, well, you know, it's funny because like it's fine. Uh, Adam doesn't need any fucking smoke. You know, he's like or whatever. He's fine. Like Adam exactly. Sandler, we don't need to talk about him. He, he's he's doing okay, but. I feel like this should be just like a funny I was worried about the episode. This should be a true I was crime. Like, how much can we really talk about this album? And now we got Shickly talk. <laughs> I don't even know what to call this episode anymore. We'll call it Peter Shickly. <laughs> yeah, just call it Peter Shickly, yeah. yeah. PDQ Bach. Yes. Yeah, we'll put that in parentheses so people know what it is, you know? It's yeah, exactly. Fans. Exactly. All right, we want to, you know, we want to work the algorithm. <laughs> let's see here. Okay, so hold on one second. Let me just set this up. Much like the likes of, I mean, how many comedians got their stud? David Letterman, Jay Leno, all these comics, Freddie Prinz, uh, all got the call over to Johnny's couch. And so this is essentially the equivalent of that, right? He got the call over? He yeah. does, after right. he performs. So let's, let's see him. Maybe he blew America away. He did. You have to listen to this introduction closely. <laughs> Clearly. Some I'm sorry, Dan. I don't mean Mr. to insult your guy. about. He is the head of the Department of Musical Pathology at the University of Southern North Dakota at Hoople. He's an authority on the music of P.D.Q. Bach, who is the 21st of Johann Sebastian Bach's 20 children. Oh, Why is that getting laughs? Would you welcome Professor... Uh, it's the 70s. <laughs> Or 80s, sorry. That was the 80s. Late 80s, too. I mean, it's not like this is like a dark era, like a dark ages for comedy or anything. Now why is Johnny entertaining this? <laughs> yeah. Like, to be fair. What the fuck is going on? For the sighted people in the room, you can see in his yeah. face he's not really into this. <laughs> but he invited him over, though. I think the performance yeah, blew Johnny, him away. Johnny has full power over there. You know, yeah, like, he's the most powerful man in fucking comedy. Yeah. Yeah. Peter Shikala. Shikala. Okay, at least we know how to say it now. I'm sticking with Shickley. I'm going to be playing a work by PDQ Bach uh, with the orchestra here, but I just, we didn't plan this, but I would like to do something a little different, you know. A lot of people say that the reason I always play with orchestra is because I'm not a very good pianist, and, and if I played alone, everybody would know that. I'd like to play, if I could, I'd just like to play a solo piano piece, a piece that everybody knows. It's Johann Sebastian Bach, the prelude in C major, from the well-tempered clavier. And that's why it's Were funny. Were people listening to classical music in the 80s? Was that still a big uh, genre? No. Hey. Hey, hey. What, what is... See, the joke is the band is covering up his bad piano playing. Oh, okay. Oh my god. I'm, who's worse, him or Madoff? Four years in a row, the Grammys deemed this the best in comedy. 
<laughs> What's going on? I have more questions than, than before. <laughs> Bernie Madoff got off easy, I think. Going, oh, come on, guys. So I guess that's the joke that they're playing over. I mean, he's right. bombing. I'm just waiting to get to Carson yawning. <laughs> now he's pissed that the band played with him. And then this is going to go into the part I partially played on my phone. It's a little informal here. Uh, the next work is by Johann. Oh, so he doesn't Bess, talk Bess, to Carson Bach's at all. Son, uh, no, he does. Uh, this is an that. excerpt from a very large, not to say gross work. Because uh, despite hey, what the Grammy this? says, I don't know if this makes good audio. <laughs> does he like? Does he get a laugh at any point? That's what I'm wondering. I'm, I'm he wondering does from like, like, thirty seconds. Let's just the thirty seconds before this. Okay. What a hoot. Yeah, you hear like a, a, a smattering of laughs. <laughs> he's doing, he's literally just doing sit ups <laughs> at the piano. Professor? I think professors you need. I gotta say, he didn't get invited to the couch, he just went there. <laughs> the audience is a, a little bit bewildered, Professor. So am I. Yes, all right. We'll come back and try to. Sort that out in just a second. Right after this. Okay, so Johnny wasn't uh, pretending to be a fan. That's good. He's laughing. I think he's just so confused. All right, if you just join us, we're going to sort this out, man. Now, Professor, I... I hope he asked all the well, questions a, a we've had. Look of puzzlement on the audience's face. Now, apparently they are not familiar with PDQ Bach. Uh, as much as you are. I have not been able to find him in any musical dictionaries at all. No, I know. I, I, my research is into PDQ Bach is a very lonely affair. I bet uh, it is. I've been kicked out of the AMJ, the American Musicological Junta. Uh, <laughs> they refuse to have anything to do with me. Uh, but I must say that the, that the researchers have sort of gained me a certain niche because if you study Beethoven and Mozart, are hundreds of other people studying those composers, right. so but nobody else is studying yourself. PDQ Bach. I really pretty got it, much got it to myself. When did you first discover that there was a PDQ Bach? This well, I was traveling in painful. Europe, and uh, a very what the fuck is thing in the uh, castle no of the Schloss, the castle of the leaking roof in southern Bavaria. Did we type this in wrong? It was definitely comedy album that he won. <laughs> yeah, Grammy Award for... <laughs> I don't I mean, understand what's going on. I mean, it would make more sense if George Carlin was nominated Best Composer. No <laughs> shit. Yeah. Less confusing. Totally. Like, if you look at everybody else who wins, like, if you look at the names on this, like, Wikipedia, too, like, he's, like, he has more wins. He has as many wins as Robin Williams. Okay. He has more wins <laughs> than Weird Al, Chris Rock, uh, Louis has three. Like Chappelle has three. I mean, forget comedians, Danny. He probably has more wins than like legitimate, like huge acts. Like Steve <laughs> Martin has two. He only, the only person who has more wins than him are Carlin and Pryor. They both have five. Oh, sorry, Bill Cosby has uh, seven. Well, they've been wow. taken away. I think haven't they? Or whatever. But like, he still won them. But like, <laughs> right. yeah, seven. So he's he's only behind. Cosby, Carlin, and Pryor. <laughs> the, the Mount Rushmore of comedy. We have to go back he's to the Pryor, Mount Rushmore. Carlin, Bill Cosby, and PD. Uh, and he's tied with Robin Williams. This is fucking wow. crazy. We're going to have to revisit the uh, Mount Rushmore comedy, I think. We got it all wrong. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it's no question. Peter Shikla. Shikla. I'm like, like again, I'm not, you can't even be like he wasn't up against anybody good. <laughs> he's up against like, like <laughs> yeah, he's like up against like, you know, even if like, I'm not a huge Jonathan Winters fan, but he beat Jonathan Winters twice. Right. <laughs> he beat Dice, Kinnison, Carlin, Jackie Mason, George Burns, Weird Al, like... It Crazy. seems like it's all predicated on it. So PDQ Bach, the joke is that he's the 21st of Bach's 20 children. 
That's like yes. the joke, I guess. That's the joke. And, and then so it's all predicated on that? Yeah. I guess. I don't understand. I guess. And dude, like he beat like the weird Al album that he beat was uh off the deep end, like with the he had the smells like teen spirit. Um you say that's his big one, right? Or his second, maybe? It's one of his. Dice has no, never I'm looking at it right now. At the 35th annual Grammy Awards in 93, Off the Deep End was nominated for Best Comedy Album. However, the album lost to Peter Shickley's music for an awful lot of wins and percussion. <laughs> Dice never won one. What we need to find now because of Shickley. The Peter Shickla fan. Shickla. Okay, says, like this album for for uh like just as a reference, this album for Weird Al was hit as high as 17 on the U S billboard 200, which is, it's a platinum album, which is fucking massive for like comedy or anything. Right. See what you can find. If you throw this in uh Craig, mm-hmm. Try, look for Peter Schickler reviews or fans or something like that. Oh, okay. I got you. Like I'm looking for Peter, big Schickler fans that get on the internet and say, Oh, you guys got to check this out. I would be surprised if this album sold more than, 10,000 copies. I, I yeah, so would I, but I would also if we just stumbled upon it I'd be surprised if it was nominated for four straight Grammys. I, I don't know. I don't think I just don't think you understand the power of Shikla, Danny. I never fucking heard of him until <laughs> an hour ago. Uh, I typed in uh, uh Peter Shikla fan club and it's nothing. His Facebook page has 3,000 likes. Um, by the way, I know this is a strange episode. Danny, very glad you brought us down this rabbit hole, but everyone make sure. Dude, I'm glad out. I found out about it. Honestly, I'm li- like, I, I'm like, yeah, I'm just, I, I'm fucking speechless right now. To be honest. <laughs> like, how crazy this is. You know what folks right now, go to, like, there's a real, there's a, some behind what's going on here is like, I'm sure a very fascinating story. <laughs> go. You know what I mean? Like YouTube. Uh, watch the International Jew on YouTube and just see if you think it can compete with the comedy of Peter Schick. <laughs> of course it you, can't. See Are what you, you crazy? think is better. See what you think is better. Mike, four, this, is, this was a four Pete, this guy. <laughs> four Pete. I know, I'm sorry. He's the opposite of the Buffalo Bills. Kind of competition, Danny. I'm just saying, I think Danny's very funny. Oh my you God. tell me if you're a Schickle guy or a... Five, did he? No, no, hell no. Did he win did every year the Buffalo Bills lost, actually? I think so, yeah. That's Holy only shit, 90 to 93. Right. <laughs> I think you might be right, Craig. Yeah. What were the Bills Super Bowls? Or were they 91 to 94? That's possible. The same era. <laughs> wow. The Schickler era. <laughs> um, see, let's see. There's looking at the Bills Super Bowls here. Uh, uh, 91 they, to 94. Yeah, 91 to 94, so. Rough. Ah, okay. All right. Well, <laughs> well, Danny. No, 90, they no, they were, the they were, no, they were 93. It says 91. They were in the, oh, does it? Yeah. Are you sure? The, again, the Super Bowls might have been played in those years. Oh, yeah, that's right. right but right. it was yeah, the yeah, year. It was, yeah, like oh, was, my God. It was the same. It was, it was the, the same, same years. He's, he was the reverse Buffalo Bills. Oh, you know, my Jim God. Jim Kelly just has a, a Shikla dartboard. <laughs> then he said, this motherfucker. <laughs> Dude, this is so crazy. Shikla keeps winning. <laughs> <laughs> the entertainment world was plagued by Peter Shikla's uh, constant victory. The, the Bills get word that he's writing a new album in preseason and they just fucking get pissed. <laughs> Yeah, our team's gonna be Man, great, but not good enough. It's too bad. Now that Josh Allen's good, Shickle's yeah. gonna have to come back. Oh, that'd be dude, this is crazy. And the fact that he's still alive. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to. Uh, Danny, I'll give you the reins if you want. You can go interview Shickle, but if not, we're gonna have to do it. Okay, I I don't know if I'm gonna go out, go out there, but we, we we'll see. I don't. I don't know what's going on, man. Oh, Honestly, yeah. my my world is just upside down right now. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know what we did today. Definitely the <laughs> strangest episode of Why Are You Laughing. But, Easily. Uh, I loved having Danny on. That was great. Yeah, thank dude, you appreciate for, it. Thank, thank, thank you, you for having us me. down that rabbit hole, man. Dude, thank you, man. I, I would have never heard of this guy in my life if it wasn't for this. So <laughs> just went, go, uh, who did go he to beat YouTube, out? Watch the International Jew. Yeah, youtube.com slash Danny Polishuk and at Danny Jokes everywhere. And uh, listen to the Boys Cast as well with Ryan. Yeah, Paul. Boys Cast every Friday. 
You do another the, podcast, right? Oh, it's the. Uh, uh, I do the podcast and then and then I do low value mail as well. Yes. I, live every Tuesday night on my YouTube channel. Beautiful, Danny. Thank you for yeah. joining us. Thank yeah. you for playing hurt. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. All right, man. Later, boys.